you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed upon the earth he never called himself owner or father he called himself son it is my church it is my members of course I, I, you understand what we are trying to say right there are people who say that to mean in terms of responsibility so don't misunderstand what I'm saying but ownership mentality is what has destroyed people a man can receive nothing except it is given to him are we together now you see the call to faithfulness is useless when you are owner the call to faithfulness is only needed when you are steward because there is someone who supervises and would vet and would check you if i own something no matter what i do with it it shouldn't be your business is that true for instance i can decide to buy a bottle of water and pour it on my head you have no right to say what are you doing because in quote i use my money i bought my bottle of water and i can even decide to tear it into two and just play around with it and throw the bottle down but if you gave me and you said i'm trusting you with this there will be no misuse because i am aware that it is not my own i have access to it look at this when a landlord gives you when he gives you access to be a tenant in his house the landlord even though it is his house he does not have a right to come and bump into that house is that true however you are forced to manage that house because you know that there are terms and agreement and a time can come when the landlord will come to vet and say no 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 you've spoiled my bulb you've spoiled the ceiling you've spoiled all of these things in many tenancy agreements when something goes wrong with the physical structure who is responsible for it you see that he may charge you but you will take responsibility to bring in electricians who fix it i can tell you the reason why there is a lot of recklessness in ministry is because most people believe it is my ministry first corinthians 4 verse 1 and 2 i need to bring to us a stewardship mentality this is what will bring discipline and decorum and seriousness and accountability. 1 Corinthians 4, let's hurry up please, verse 1 and 2. It says, let a man so account of us. Do I quote it? Stewards, okay, beautiful, we have it here. Verse 1, please. Let's go back to verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of god you know what a steward is a caretaker verse 2 it says moreover it is required if it is true that you are a steward it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful say i will be faithful faithful with the money god gave you faithful with the wisdom he gave you faithful with the beautiful voice like my dear friend here who came to sing faithful with everything god gave you when people are reckless and arrogant and act as if they are the god of themselves it is because they do not know that they were given this it was the misc of nebuchadnezzar until he was turned to an animal for seven years and when nebuchadnezzar repented and came back his testimony was that he acknowledged that there was a god above that rules over the affairs of men I will tell you the reason why ministry is stressing a lot of people they have not allowed the owner to be owner they have not allowed the owner to be owner the earth is the lord's the fullness there of the walls and they that dwell therein we are stewards when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent thee are we understanding this now the next thing I want to talk about very quickly are you learning 
I want to share with us our corporate mandate as believers. If all I do is just to bring these definitions and clear up these perspectives, because most of the mistakes in ministry is because of a definition we have inherited or we have received that is pungent to kingdom come. There are two scriptures that clearly reveal the mandate of the believer. That means regardless our individual assignments in the fivefold business corporate world, we have a universal mandate as believers. Two scriptures. Never forget this for the rest of your life. John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7. John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7. Please help us media. John chapter 1. Okay. It says here there was a man sent from God where did he come from sent from God that means you only pass through the womb of your mother but you were sent from God John 1 verse 6 there was a man sent from God everybody say I was sent from God say it with understanding I was sent from God I don't care the biological activities that are around how you arrived sent from God through the womb of a woman sent from God through the Yoruba territory sent from God through the Igbo or South South territory sent from God through the Northern territory you are not a Northerner you are not a Southerner you are not an Easterner you are sent from God and you pass through that territory so the greater part of your consciousness should be where you came from not where you are passing through are we together there was a man sent from god when he arrived the earth they gave him a name they called him john verse 7 why did he come the same came for a witness the same came for what is it ever written here that he came to be a prophet so why do you call him a baptist and a prophet the bible says he came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe this is our corporate mandate there was a man sent from god when he arrived the earth they called him joshua selman and the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through his witness in the area of the fivefold men might believe there is a man sent from god who came as whatever it is when he arrived the earth they named him whatever name they gave him he came as a witness to the light that all men through the business and finance being the geography of his witness that ultimately men might believe you do not define yourself by the geography of your witness you define yourself by this corporate mandate say i am a witness a witness has the singular assignment of validating a claim a witness is not necessary until there is a contention over a claim satan is there proving that jesus is not lord and forcing nations to disbelieve in jesus and he sends you in business he sent you in ministry he sent you in politics he sent you in the fivefold what you call the pulpit ministry sent you as an evangelist a prophet a pastor an apostle all together the corporate mandate is the same we have people in this church working in the worship team working in the media working in the protocol they are more conscious about the goal of the church than the geography of their assignment is that true the protocol is motivated by the same motivation the media person is motivated by the welfare all motivated by the same motivation to ultimately see that God's purposes as committed to the man of God is effectively executed when a businessman starts thinking like a pastor and a pastor starts thinking like a businessman when a politician starts thinking like a man of God and a man of God starts thinking there is the sharing of that understanding because they are ultimately motivated by the same goal that all men through him might believe 
Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It says there again, Jesus is speaking, that you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Say, I am a witness. The geography, what you call your assignment, is simply the geography of your witness. If you are a man of God, you are a witness using the pulpit as a platform. If you are a businessman, you are a witness using commerce and business and real estate and whatever it is as a platform. If you are a politician, you are a witness using the platform of politics and governance and the parliament as a platform. Are we together now? If you are an academician, for instance, you are using the platform of academics. Very, very important. Because many people you see, please look up, let me have your attention. Many people do not understand that being a witness is greater than the geography of the witness. So you say, I am a businessman. You are right to the layman. I am a preacher. You are right to the layman. I am a politician. You are right to the layman. But from a kingdom perspective, you are none of these things. You are a witness in politics. You are a witness in governance. You are a witness as a preacher. Are we together now? You are a witness as a family man, a father, a mother. You are a witness as whoever and whatever. So your witness, the consciousness of you being a validator and a defender of the claims of God is greater than the geography. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Somebody shout, I am a witness. If you understand that you are not just a businessman but a witness as a businessman what you will do with that money will be different from someone who is just a businessman if you understand that you are not just a preacher you are a witness using the platform of preaching the way you will preach will be different the carelessness and the recklessness that happens around sadly around ministry business politics is because people do not understand that they are witnesses a witness is a validator that means everything you say everything you do is supposed to be proving the reality of the lordship of jesus christ is someone learning this morning hallelujah let's look at a scripture that i believe will bless you and then we'll find somewhere to tie it down for this discussion this morning the heart condition of a minister now when I say minister I mean first the fivefold ministers and then it extends to kingdom ambassadors where all ministers you understand what I'm saying now right there is a heart requirement listen very carefully God does not just use people carelessly there is a heart condition and a heart requirement that God looks for and let me tell you this if God does not find that you will never never truly be used mightily by God most people have missed out on the opportunity to be greatly used by God because of their heart condition. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Very quickly, please, let's look at it. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. If you see it projected, can you see it there? Please read with me. Let's read together. One, two, read. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my way. Please look up. The first requirement is the correction and the surrender of your heart. Can I tell you? Everything you do that is right or wrong stems from your heart condition. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. You can fast all you want to fast. You can pray all you want to pray. You can do every kind of night vigil or spiritual exercise you want. 
that the only thing that gives your spiritual exercise is credence is the state of your heart please say the state of my heart the state of your heart vetoes your fasting the state of your heart vetoes your prayer the state of your heart vetoes your word study the state of your heart vetoes your good communication many people have every other thing in place but the state of their heart the motivation behind your heart the things that you do can i tell you allow god in the next one minute to do a surgery in your heart there are people who got into ministry fivefold today simply because they heard that when a man preaches they give him honorarium and they feel instead of getting a job that i'll be collecting 40 40 000, when will i gather enough to build a house let me quietly go to the vineyard that corrupted motif so after three years when it looks like it's not happening it will be easy to receive power from the devil because your motivation was never to see jesus glorified there are others who their motivation for getting into ministry is because someone looked down on them and said you will never be great and he said i will never be great you will see and they went to answer the call other people got they submitted their job with nmpc civil defense you know all of this place and i'm not being sarcastic they didn't seem to get jobs and they say instead of wasting away at least let me be a pastor i know that there will be one member who believes in me enough to sow into my life off they go other people are in ministry just because they just feel like i love god too much and what will i do with this this amount of love i have for god i can't waste it away business is too small to express that love so let me get to ministry your the state of your heart is what gives you the staying power in ministry if the state of your heart was corrupt from beginning no matter what activity you are involved with believe me you will end up being frustrated is god speaking to someone in my experience and and many of you may have heard me say that my desire was never to be a man of god to be a preacher no no i just loved jesus with my all and sincerely in whatever capacity he wanted me to serve i would be grateful more than grateful to serve that's why it remains an honor for me today to be given the mandates that he has given me by grace and i do not toy with it because the sheer level of gratitude to be trusted with this level of grace it remains ever before me are we together the state of your heart you go and ask the lord every time i go to god in prayer i'm not praying lord more power more anointing more fame more increase thank god for those things but believe me my greatest prayer till today is lord search my heart try my thoughts and find out if there is any wicked way oh david you may never know that there is a murderer in you you see let me tell you how the heart condition works when you see god not bless and help certain people don't fight him he knows what he's doing if you saw the little david you would never know that there was a murderer hiding in that boy there are many wrong things in our heart that an opportunity has not yet been created for it to find expression but it does not mean it is not there for instance you never know whether you like women or not to you you say god for me no women may god forbid it how do they do that thing in the name of jesus christ you go and ask david you never knew that you can fight and kill because somebody called you joshua selman instead of apostle joshua selman you didn't know that there was that lust for power and honor and while you are starting god says beware work on this can i tell you whatever god tells you to work on don't argue just work on it whether you understand it or not you never knew that you could kill for money you could tell lies you never knew that you could sit down in front of a herbalist and say i'm tired of this it must work by whether if god is not going to help me if they have what the heaven helps those who you know those kinds of wise sayings that come from frustrations and now you sit down there i know you are laughing but i hope you are learning
when your heart condition is wrong when christ is not the center of your heart no matter what god tells me today about my life i will not argue i will go quickly to roll before him and say lord i don't want to wait until i see it if you say it you are right let god be true and every man a liar this is a lesson for you to learn because there are many many preachers today who do not have any allowance for god to keep vetting and probing their hearts as at the time you said god i love you you've never stayed in a five-star hotel you've never flown private jet or first class or any kind of priority or superior service so it was just ignorance that was saying i love you it was not really knowledge there was nothing to lay down you were already down what are you laying down but by the time you are in the midst of plenty god lifting and honoring you and helping you can you still go back and say god they may be clapping for me but here is my heart again i'm sharing with you a very deep secret more than just learning principles and principles and principles if your heart condition is wrong you will do every principle right you will be shocked it will still not work your heart condition i am ever aware of this when god begins to lift me or opens any door very quickly i go to him lord your boy is here again with all the human tendencies people clapping calling you king of kings and lord of lords don't say it who enter you go and ask william branham go and ask people who have gone ahead of you you rush to god and say before i destroy myself out of foolishness vet me and god says you are doing well but lost be careful it's already beginning to grow you don't say god god forbid you are rebuking god forbid no pride in the last two weeks it's like pride is already growing deal with it that spirit of competition is already at work in you the moment he comes to you like that rejoice rejoice can i tell you you may have heard it in my teachings you know a man who is a man of the secret place because you will never see any deficiency for a long time you will see this for two months pride is growing one day you will just see that it has gone you will know that the secret place the place where men are changed when you see people continue to grow in certain levels of error for a long time it is because their pride has covered that aspect of them they don't give god allowance to prune it and work on it john 15 the person i love is the one that i prune so that he will bear much fruit you may not like what i'm teaching you this morning but if it's fruitfulness you want in ministry forget that pride of perfectionism go back to god in sincerity till tomorrow till forever i will never go to god with any sense of perfectionism no we live in a world where we are obsessed to look flawless before men you better go before god and roll on the ground and say god please search my heart it's not self-condemnation let people keep calling you whatever they will clap for you the day you crash they will bury you and move forward so if the heart of men, men are wicked they can clap for you and call you all kinds of things let ministry go down you will see the same people who call you king of kings who say crucify him when Benny Hinn was younger in ministry am I wasting your time when Benny Hinn was younger in ministry Marilyn Hickney told him something she said Benny if you can find five people who love you sincerely and believe in you you are about the luckiest man on earth he laughed and he told her that it was kings that receive him when he goes he goes for crusades of course I'm saying this now with all honor to him and because he has shared it himself when he had a challenge you know in ministry marriage and all of that in 24 hours half of his partners left sir half the people who are saying we will stand with you and preach the gospel with you nobody cared to verify anything everybody just went to your tent to israel and he stood there broken with bills in debt it is painful when those who say hosanna also say crucify him 
so before you allow the flattery of men to destroy you let me teach you that there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother run away from that celebrity deception and stay with the one who will stay with you no matter what happens this is a message our generation of ministers need I receive over 800 text messages every day and I thank God and I honor the Lord for all of these people I sleep and I wake up to all kinds of commendations but I can tell you I know that there is one and one alone who can accommodate all the versions of me where would I be if you left me now? where would I be if you is someone learning your heart condition that's why God can take another man's prayer request and give to one as a gift because he has found your heart condition so right I pray for myself even as I'm standing here with you may I never get too big that God cannot search my heart and tell me his verdict you see the person who loves you is the one who will open up to you like this because most times when we come as preachers we just patch everything and just know the secret is not just in expertise there are times where your boat is right there are times when you are at the sea where you should catch fish there are times where you have the net but you will still not catch fish it is not an error in your system there is just no fish at that point you to take a relationship with the one who can give fish there are times if your net is torn you won't catch fish but there are times all the principles are correct if there is one secret i want to teach you today about ministry there are a few other principles that are powerful but the greatest of them that i've seen in my life and believe me with all humility i know what i'm saying people call me every time and say apostle you are this you are that how come this results and i say oh dear you do not know that this man who stands before you is the puppet you are seeing there is one who is behind him there are certain things that cannot be done by men is god speaking to someone you need to allow god to vet that pride vet that whatever it is especially our generation of preachers let's be careful we live in a world that is obsessed with being celebrities yes enjoy the honor and whatever blessing that comes with ministry but please learn this about men men are very self-centered if they clap for you they are only clapping for themselves through you you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty O oh, morning star you truly are when i learned this in life I thank God for all that represents honor that he has given to me but I have trained myself every day sometimes I stand before a mirror and looking at myself I say Joshua Selman you were once a baby in the hand of a woman do not let the nation celebrate you out of your secret place they were not there when God started they only met you at the corridors of greatness and they don't have enough patience to stay with you stay with the one who started with you when you did not look like it preachers some of you here are frustrating yourself and killing yourself over land and building issue leave that and go back to the secret place go back and say lord i may not have members i may not have great followership across the globe but one thing i have is you and you are that treasure are you learning lord what is it about one billion that you cannot give me and he says you are right 
your heart condition i love you too much to give you one billion what do you mean you love me too much when i gave you 10 million i didn't see you again you disappeared and ran away morning devotion i'm flying business class i have to hurry up and he says just because of 10 million naira no i love you too much to keep you in that state you know when people claim things in church now i'm a man of faith don't get me wrong but when people claim things you know sometimes i just watch with wonder and i say what do you think god is a robot when you read in the bible that his last treasurer betrayed him don't just say god give me money find out what the treasurer did not do because god is still looking for treasurers his last one disappointed him and if you come and say lord i want to be your treasurer make sure you are not judas again can i tell you go and learn all the greek and the hebrew you can learn if your heart condition is wrong you will be surprised how you will know so much and yet doors of ministry will not open go and try to know all the connections of men go and learn the principles go and receive different anointing oils from men of god and pour it at once on your head because of how determined you are to carry the anointing and you will be shocked you will only look like a herbalist nothing absolutely nothing will stay there because your heart condition please do not forget this jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it any man including joshua selman the heart of man is desperately deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 please read together if you're a christian and you can see it are you ready one to read i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to what not according to his begging not according to his desire according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings let me tell you sincerely believers i have had the honor and the privilege of talking with the fathers of faith in this nation and across a few other nations i've had the honor of learning wisdom from several people i can tell you behind the giant genuine exploits that you see is a heart that is broken humble malleable before the god of heaven when people say great people are proud, I say compared to what? Someone can bring me a cup of water now and based on someone's mindset, this is pride. Why didn't I go and carry it myself? So when people say people are proud, I say based on what standard? You have to look at where the person is standing first. You can meet someone washing my clothes now and say it's pride. What is it about washing that you... <laughs> Ah, believers, please go for a retreat. Use this conference and go. It's an advice. Go for a retreat. In that retreat, don't put your hand in your pocket. Lie on the ground flat. Carry your certificate, carry your Bible, carry your ministry CSE document and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. If you do not help me, I don't know what tendencies are in my heart. Carry your business, your company, whatever it is your accolades and cry before god and he will come to you and say because you have shown me that your heart is right let's go and i'm telling you it will look like you held a charm in one month god can open doors for you in a way that will surprise you i know what i am saying beloved in christ thank you for watching this video if you are new here too, I would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel for me and then hit on the like button. Also, I would want you to share this message across. I would want you to do one thing for us.
kindly tell us in the comment section where you're watching us from and you've got any testimony for us kindly let us know thank you for watching stay blessed in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain